About half of the adults in the United States have high blood pressure, and that number increases to 80% of older adults. It's no coincidence that most of us are also deficient in potassium. Most of us get only about half the amount of potassium we need, and only 1.4% of Americans get the amount of potassium necessary to support healthy blood pressure levels. And if we look at the amount of blood pressure reduction expected from first-line medications like thiazide diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and calcium channel blockers, we see that the amount of blood pressure reduction is about the same as what you would get from potassium supplementation. So the question is, why does potassium work to lower blood pressure, and how much do you need to get these kind of results? So let's start with what happens when you take potassium, and how does it lower blood pressure? When you take potassium, it gets rapidly absorbed across the gastrointestinal tract into the bloodstream. From there, it travels through the arterial system, where it gets absorbed across the inner lining of the arterial wall, and there it encounters the smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle in the arteries in hypertension is constricted, increasing the amount of resistance in those arteries and raising your blood pressure. Potassium relaxes those smooth muscles, allowing those blood vessels to dilate, improving flow, and lowering your blood pressure. Now, as potassium travels through the circulatory tract, it eventually reaches the kidney where it has two additional effects to lower blood pressure. As potassium enters the glomerulus, which is the individual filtering unit of the kidney, it reaches a set of cells called the juxtaglomerular cells. And these are the last set of cells in the artery before it reaches the filtering state in the kidney. Juxtaglomerular cells secrete a hormone called renin, which acts to retain sodium and water and constrict arteries, raising blood pressure. Potassium acts like an off switch, turning off renin secretion and allowing your body to excrete sodium and water and helping those smooth muscles relax to allow better flow throughout the body, lowering blood pressure. Once the potassium flows past those juxtaglomerular cells, it gets filtered into the urinary tract where it reaches the sodium chloride co-transporter. Potassium acts like an off switch here as well, turning off the sodium chloride co-transporter, which is responsible for retaining sodium and water. Now, the more sodium and water we have in the body, the higher the blood pressure. So potassium turns off this recycling mechanism, allowing your body to start flushing out sodium and water, lowering your blood pressure. So these are the three ways that potassium lowers blood pressure. It has a direct effect to dilate arteries, it turns off renin production, and it turns off the sodium chloride co-transporter. Now, the interesting thing is that these are the three ways that most blood pressure medications work. Medications like calcium channel blockers or nitrates or other direct vasodilators work on the blood vessel to dilate that smooth muscle and allow more flow through the artery. Medications like beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers work on the renin pathway, turning off the impact of renin throughout the body much the same way that potassium does. And lastly, thiazide diuretics like chlorothaladone or hydrochlorothiazide work on the sodium chloride co-transporter. So when we look at the amount of blood pressure reduction that we get from potassium, it's not surprising that we're getting the same magnitude of benefit as most of these first-line treatments for high blood pressure because potassium's working the same way. And in fact, you could think of blood pressure medications as treating the symptoms of potassium deficiency because if we just replace the potassium, then we wouldn't need a lot of these medications. So the question is, how much potassium do you need to see this effect? Well, most studies are done with a dose of around 60 milliequivalents, which is roughly equivalent to about 2,300 milligrams of potassium daily. Now, you would want to divide that dose up, so maybe take 1,000 milligrams twice a day and then get a little bit extra from food. That would be one way to get to an extra 2,300 milligrams of potassium daily. But some studies have shown that you can get benefits even with half that dose, which would be 30 milliequivalents or about 1,200 milligrams of potassium daily. So the range of potassium replacement that you should be thinking about if you're considering using potassium to manage blood pressure is anywhere from 1,000 milligrams daily to 2,000 milligrams and maybe even a little bit higher. And you can divide that dose up into one or two doses throughout the day 
I usually take 1,000 milligrams twice a day, and then I try to stick to a high potassium diet to boost it even further. Now, the important thing is that you must have healthy kidneys for this to work. So if you have any question about your kidney health, then you want to talk to your doctor before supplementing potassium. And also, if you're taking certain medications that may interfere with the metabolism of potassium, definitely want to talk to your doctor as well. So for most of us with healthy kidneys, taking potassium is safe and effective for managing blood pressure and can really help you support blood pressure in the normal range. And the beauty of this is that high potassium diets have been associated with numerous positive health outcomes like a lower incidence of kidney disease, kidney stones, stroke, osteoporosis, heart disease, and more. And actually studies show that people who have the highest potassium in their diets tend to live longer. So I hope this video helped you understand the role of potassium in supporting healthy blood pressure levels. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.